Does the top speed of a high speed rail line matter? If you've been in the transit community for long enough, you probably noticed quite a bit of discussion about the topic of what counts as true high speed rail. You will see a project where they're building a fast train line which doesn't quite fit the traditional definition of high speed and people will come out to say that it shouldn't be considered a high speed line on the technicality. Is this a fair way to look at things? In this quick impromptu video I'm going to argue that that isn't really a fair way of looking at things and let's look at a few case studies across Europe to see how that is. A good country to look at when considering the purpose of high speed rail, I think, is the Netherlands. The Netherlands has one true high speed line connecting Amsterdam to Rotterdam, part of the greater line from Amsterdam to Paris. In the Netherlands you have your high speed international services and slightly slower but still fast domestic services all running on the same line. I don't think this is necessarily because the Netherlands are wasting their high speed line, it's just that they've recognised that, that hitting the top speed all the time isn't the most efficient use of it and that slower domestic services could still make great use of a direct route between Amsterdam and Rotterdam. A somewhat similar story can be seen next door in Germany. Germany does have several high speed lines that fit the true definition, but a lot of them don't hit that 300 kilometers an hour benchmark. There are plenty of upgraded lines in Germany, lines that only fit somewhere between the 200 and 300 threshold because these lines are not built with steep grades that only light high speed trains can navigate, they can be used by freight services at quieter times of the day and heavier locomotive trains such as night services as well. And this can be seen in Deutsche Bahn's ordering patterns. A lot of their new high speed trains from the ICE T to the ICE 4 and now the upcoming ICE L don't reach 300 kilometers an hour. The latter, in fact, only 230. I think what Germany has learned through building high speed rail is that you can get a comprehensive network by adapting lines to their locality instead of going for that dream Paris to Marseille high speed line that's full speed all the way. They can instead choose when to upgrade versus when to build parallel to an existing line versus when to build a fully new line. Elsewhere in the German speaking world you have Switzerland and Austria, both of which have built some new high speed lines but none of which reach that 300 kilometers an hour threshold. In Switzerland's case they are often tamed by geography. The 250 kilometers an hour lines often in the very straight base tunnels through the Alps and even then they aren't required to run at top speed all the time. Austria's current high speed network is effectively an upgrade to their existing main lines where instead of going for the straighter route they've gone for something that takes advantage of existing infrastructure improving line speeds without having to reinvent the wheel. I think the last country to look at in a case study is actually probably Denmark. Denmark's main lines have actually been upgraded to around 180 kilometers an hour in a lot of places and while they do have a program of building up some high speed lines none of them reach 300 kilometers an hour. Indeed their current order of new high speed trains from Alston all cap out at 200 kilometers an hour. I think all of these examples demonstrate places where countries have realized that they don't need to go full city to city top speed all of the time. Switzerland, Austria and Denmark are both great examples of countries that have built fantastic railway networks without going full high speed. 
Simply by recognising that their geography can often be a barrier to building full high-speed networks, and figuring out how you can build fast trains in those countries regardless. That kind of adaptability, where more regional and freight services can use these lines, is a great way of making up for your investment in these lines in the first place. I think all these examples prove that you don't need 300 kilometers an hour in order to attract people to fast railway services. If taking the train is faster and more convenient than taking a car or flying, then does it really matter whether the train is 300 kilometers or 200 or somewhere in between? I think these are just all points to keep in mind when you consider where the high-speed rail line really needs to be at the top standard everywhere. Thank you for watching.